Good evening, everybody. We've got here a 1v1 between two pro players on a map that I absolutely love, and that is African Clearing. So it is a nomad start, so as they are placing their town centers, I will speed it up just a little bit. It is between Lix and Velez, of course, and let's get right into it. So Velez is playing in the red on this far eastern side of the map, and he's playing as the Tatars, and his enemy in the blue as the Slavs is Lix. So a little bit more open for Lix and uh, Velez choosing to go into the, the bit of a pocket in the corner here. Obviously, lots of back and forth in a nomad start. It just always leads to being a little bit more messy than a regular start. And uh, we will see a little bit of vill fights here, but I doubt we will see a villager kill. It will likely just be a uh, couple skirmishes here and there, and uh, they will end up just collecting fish. Tayana. I assume that Velez will win this, as he does have more and villagers over here, but it is close to Lix's base, so could go either way. But of course, they are walled in at this point in time. So with African clearing, you always want to take advantage of the shorefish. There is a ton of food spread out around this map. We've got goats, we've got zebras sitting all over the place, we've got rhinos, we've got elephants, and we've got lots of shorefish for your villagers to collect up. Certain, obviously certain uh, civilizations will get some benefits out of that, whether you are the uh, faster collecting from herdables, whether you're getting extras from herdables, whether you are getting bonuses from uh, either the hunt or the shorefish, and uh, neither of these will be getting huge benefits as far as speed goes, um, but obviously the name of the game early on is Collection of Food. I do like that little move that Lix pulled off there with the goat, just getting, making sure that his hunter doesn't get damaged, especially before Loom does come in. And there is a slight lead for Lix's villager count. Uh, Velez has been fairly consistent. Hazard. But of course he did choose to go for Loom first. So that does lose out on a little bit of villager time. A little bit of villager creation. But if you do have to get any engagements. Or if you're collecting from a long distance for a rhino or an elephant. That can be very helpful. One thing to note, Lix is choosing to go for the small spread out groups of trees rather than the forest on the outside. So this map does have forest surrounding the entire outside. So you can see Velez starting to build a lumber camp there so that he has access to lumber long term. Velez choosing instead to go for just these few baobab trees. Of course, it is worthwhile still as there is about 1200 wood sitting in between these these are all 200 wood a piece and we'll see if that pays off Salam. always uh i personally prefer the the larger ones but i'm not an expert so what can i say i'm not a professional Salam. Now the shorefish is starting to run out for each of the players. We do still have some, but it is not becoming as safe. So the shorefish next to the town center does start to fade away little by little. And we see the first one to click up, as a matter of fact, is Lix. He does click up just that little bit quicker. He will have a pretty big advantage of the feudal age times. We'll see if he comes out with any aggression. I'm assuming he'll be building a barracks here. That is the barracks. And then, of course, with the amount of food income he has, he will have scouts on the field as well. His enemy, of course, choosing to go a little bit later into the next age, but he does have a two villager lead, so that'll be huge for Velez as he is choosing to go for gold miners, so we'll be seeing archers rather than the traditional scouts. And with this build, of course with Velez, we might even see a 
couple of spearmen coming out early. And Rinis? Out of that barracks that he does build on the front. He will need to just buy some time. He, that is the good thing about the way Salam. that he has built his base. It is a lot more hey. protected from the town center. Salam. So he can run underneath the town center, collect and up Rinis? these goats, collect this shorefish safely without worrying about scouts getting too close in and just a couple of houses will be able to wall his entire base into the town center so that should be okay as we see a stable coming up as fast as possible for licks and uh no archery range as of yet for velez instead Opting to go for the wood upgrade to begin with, and just a spearman to start out. But of course, that spearman will deny the uh, forward outpost, and we will start to see some villagers coming out. Spearman, but this scout is going to be the main decider at this point in time, as the scout is just so, so strong early in the feudal age before we get a mass of archers. And uh, spears are... The natural counter for a scout, but they can never quite catch up to how quick a scout does move. Villager count, still a one villager advantage for Velez, as Velez has gotten loom at this point in time, but he is uh, one ahead just because he was slightly later to the feudal age, so his economy will be a little bit stronger but not so much that it's completely noticeable early on this is a little thing that we would I like to men. see little wins here How's and it? there adding up over time and once he gets a few archers out he's got this watchtower on this gold he will likely want to be collecting stone afterwards Salam. as he is walling off this side of the base fairly good little base that he's got going in not quite as spread out as licks but of course that's the licks we all know and love I'm wanting to spread out wanting to go all in I'm aggression ready. for the army and uh he's already going forward with some scouts he does have an archery range coming up a couple skirmishers will be able to completely negate the army Salam. of belez and uh the scouts a How's bit it? too close for comfort there but a little bit of an impasse between the two. One thing, Fletching already in for Velez, and I do not believe that it is in yet for... it. I, I know for a fact, as a matter of fact, that it is not in yet for Lix, as he does not have a blacksmith. A couple more free shots on those scouts, and one scout goes down from the archers. That is a great play. For the Tatar player. So of course, a couple archers here and there. They can do some damage, especially to the spearmen. But they need to get that mass to engage against a large group of scouts. And a few skirmishers coming out will make a difference. Taking a look at Lix, he does have a lot of stone actually. 314 stone will probably be wanting to drop a tower fairly soon but not quite at a position to be dropping one. He will have to turn around shortly, <clears throat> as both are going to start to look to the next age pretty quickly here, but they don't want to get the foot off the gas when it comes to their army. It's very important for both of these players to maintain army production, to make sure that they're not falling behind in any way that they can. So this is where the Micro because will come I'm into play. The Spears yeah. not super helpful for Licks as they are negated because by yeah. both the Skirmishers and the Archers and then obviously a one for one sort of deal when it comes to the Spearmen. Yeah. And interesting spot for a Watchtower, Licks just wanting control at this point in time. That's all he's looking for. He wants map control and he wants it now. Will this tower go up? That is a question. He will likely lose a couple of villagers here. And look at that. Only two villagers left alive, but the tower does go up. Is it worth it? He is four villagers behind right now as he walls in this tower. He wants to make sure that stays up and that negates this stone. But he does know there is stone in the background for the enemy. 
I think Lix is going to want to put the pressure on as much as possible early on and make sure that he doesn't allow the enemy to get too much of an economy. He must know at this point in time that he is far behind when it comes to economies. But I don't think he realizes just how far behind he is when it comes to military as well. Dropping in a second archery range and his spread out town works very well when he has map control but now that he's losing this map control not a great move on his part at this point in time he only has a few skirmishers back three will be falling very quickly to this army of archers and skirmishers we got 12 archers and skirmishers combined and then three spearmen as well uh, really interested to see what sort of reaction we get he does have the tc he does protect these farms does protect this shore fish but only a few skirmishers will fall very quickly look at that one shotting each one of them now and uh, just like that that army is pretty much good as gone and it wasn't much of an army to begin with but licks falling very far behind when it comes to his advantages that he could have seen earlier on in the game. He is producing a lot of skirmishers, so he does have that consistency coming out in favor of him. And he's going forward with a tower, but six archers, now seven. That is going to be very painful, and that is going to cause a lot of damage. And uh, Lix choosing to just deny it, and a GG. So a little bit of a quick game, but just showing the importance of you know, one, two villager leads and snowballing, snowballing, snowballing. That is one thing to note also when going for early scouts. If you can't be getting those picks, if you can't get those little advantages here and there before the archers mass up, you do fall behind and then there's it's too late to switch over to skirmishers. Overall, good game and I absolutely love this map.